is the root issue for that hatred towards our black brothers and sisters. The Lord woke me up kind of in the middle of the night and he answered that question. And, and the answer was, because they're my chosen people. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to Jerusalem with great slaughter. Many outrages and atrocities were committed against the remainder of the people. It has been estimated that over one million Hebrews fled into the interiors of Africa from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Hebrew slaves. To reconnect to your history, you need to do three things. One, you need to redefine who the children of Judah are according to the old references. Not from the 1900s and newer, because those books tend to have a totally, completely different history in those books. So you have to ask yourself, how did we lose this in history? How did you lose 400,000 people in history? And the reason why I say how did you lose 400,000 people in history is not in the books. Many people in today's time, many Israelites who don't know their heritage or who they are, are looking back. Now it is up to us to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Come now and take a journey with me into this newfound crazy reality. Most people are gonna think you when it's saying you see, even sometimes. Deep in the shadows of the dark forest, hidden among the cragged rock along the veins of an old mountain. Called by the name of Mount Seir. Haunted by wraiths not quite human and not quite beast, but perhaps something that lies in between. Not descended from the sons of Adam nor the sons of Noah, and rumored to be born of a forbidden union between fallen angels and the souls of men who produced the Raphael the Zuzi the Emmys and last but not least the Horites whose seed was mingled with men spread wide upon the peaks of Mount Seir and deep in the bowels of a hollow cave. You see, the Horites were the bride of Esau, who was born with a hairy red coat upon his naked skin, which forced him to seek out shelter upon the deep, long shadows of Mount Seir, where he would disappear into the darkness of the forest, far away from the reach of man where he would dwell, bear young, hunt, and find his true love. Esau's union with the people of the mountain would have far-reaching ramifications for mankind that would last until this very day. An exchange of blood, an oath, would mark the descendants of this union for ages to come. You see, according to the scriptures, Esau was the only people to mix with the Horites during the times of old, therefore creating a hybrid Horite Edomite offspring who would carry the traits of both Horites and the traits of Esau all rolled up into one new unique breed of people. An 
Now, let's take a look at the definition of the word Horite. According to the Strong's Concordance, which means cave dweller, as the following reference reads, and reads Strong's number H2752, that Strong's H2752 means Horims or Horites. It means cave dweller or troglodytes. You see, we can find these cave dwellers living among the descendants of Esau in Genesis chapter 36, verse 8, which reads, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau, Murel, the son of Beshemeth, the wife of Esau. These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land, Lotan, and Shobal, and Zibiah, and Anna, and Dishan, and Ezra, and Dishan. These are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir in the land of Eden. These are the dukes that came of the Horites, Duke Lotan, Duke Shobal, Duke Zibion, and Duke Anna, Duke Dishan, Duke Ezra, Duke Dishan. These are the dukes that came of Horai, among their dukes in the land of Seir. You see fam, the Horites were divided into two groups, the East Horites and the West Horites. It was the East Horites who initially interacted with Esau, while the West Horites did not mix with Esau until later, as described in the Zonovan Bible Dictionary. Horite, or perhaps cave dweller, or nobleman or son. Also, Horim. Phonetically, this name is the Old Testament Hebrew equivalent of extra biblical Hurian. In other words, fam, it's also known as Hurian, as the name Hurian, which are an actual people. But we'll come back to that later. So let's drop down to the next paragraph, to the next highlighted section, which reads These people, whom we may refer to as East Horites, and who were driven out and destroyed by the Edomites, were apparently not Hurians. On the other hand, it is thought by some that the name Horite originally stood in two places where the Hebrew text has Hivite. Skipping ahead. So these passages would refer to a group that we may call West Horites because they are said to reside in the region to the west of the Jordan. They are to be kept distinct from the East Horites, the predecessors of the Edomites. The West Horites, it is claimed by some, are non-Semitic, related to the peoples called Hurians in extra-biblical texts of the second millennia BC. We can also find this description of the Horites in the Bible Gateway as well, as it reads, Horites, these East Horites, the predecessors of the Edomites were apparently not Hurians. For the next section reads, these Horites were called West Horites because the passages cited indicate for them a residence in the region to the west of the Jordan. And the next reference reads and reads, the upshoot is that the Horites and Edom had become one people. In addition, the role of Edom in the exile of the ten tribes, the continued involvement of Edom in their history needs to be kept in mind. Skipping ahead, because of the intermarriages and cultural borrowings between the Edomite families and Horites, it became the norm for their collective association. Red-headed Esau himself was hirsute, a coincidental similarity. It's important to note that both the Horite and Esau lived in the same places. Therefore, if you find the Horites, you'll more than likely find Esau. As the following reference reads, it reads, the Horites in their divisions are listed as part of Eden. In Egyptian inscriptions, the Horite land is referred to as Kar, formerly transliterated as Hari. It says, 
The Horites were also found in what is now northern Syria, Turkey, and Mesopotamia. Archaeological finds indicate that they spoke a language called Huri, similar to that later known as Urartu. According to I. M. Dekonov and S. Satorsten, the Hurian and Urartan languages are related to the Northeast Caucasian tongues. That's important, fam. We'll come back to that later. But let's keep reading. It says, The Horites in Hebrew are referred to as Horim, or in archaeological terms as Hurians. The Bible recalls the Horites as dwelling around Mount Seir, which was to the south of Canaan. All right, fam. So in the Bible, Mount Seir is synonymous with Esau. In other words, if you find Mount Seir, more than likely, you'll find Esau's hairy descendants called Edomites. Now we note that the name Seir literally means hairy and shaggy, which is befitting of the descendants of Esau because remember, in the scripture, Esau was described as being hairy and red. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25, which reads, and the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Now consider this, Esau was so hairy that his brother Jacob once put hairy goat skin on his neck and his arms to impersonate Esau. Think about it fam, the hair of a goat. Now that's one red hairy dude living on a mountain called Harry and Shaggy with a people called Cave Dwellers on Mount Seir. Now family, did you know that there was more than one Mount Seir? in the Bible, AKA Harry Mountain. In fact, there's the Mount Seir that most people are familiar with, which is located in the territory of Esau, which is also the home of the Horites. However, there's also another Mount Seir in the territory of Judah, just west of the Valley of the Raphael, also known as the Valley of the Giants. And for this, let's take a look at the encyclopedia in the Bible Hub, which reads, number one, the Mount and the Land of Seir are alternative appellations of the mountainous tract which runs along the eastern side of Arabah, occupied by the descendants of Esau, who succeeded the ancient Horites. Number two, which is the second Mount Seir, it reads, Seir, a landmark on the boundary of Judah. Now, let's take a look at the Smith's Bible Dictionary, it reads, Seir, it means hairy, shaggy. And number one reads, we have both the land of Seir. And it says, it is the original name of the mountain range extending along the east side of the Valley of Arabah, from the Dead Sea to the Atlantic Gulf. And then two, which is the second Mount Seir, it says, Mount Seir, an entirely different place from the foregoing. In other words, it's different from the first one. One of the landmarks on the north boundary of the territory of Judah. And for that, you can read Joshua chapter 15, verse 10. So as stated before, you can indeed find two Mount Seers in the Bible. However, did you know that there was a third Mount Seer? One that was discovered in an unsuspecting place. That's right. That's right. This third Mount Seer, one whose people would shape the very trajectory of mankind all around the world. For this third Mount Seer is located in none other than the Caucasus Mountain. And for this, let's take a look at the Jewish Encyclopedia and let's take a look at the definition of the word Caucasus or Caucasia. And it reads, the exact number of Caucasian Jews is not easily determined. Some of them in Southern provinces have adopted the Mohammedan religion, while others in Georgia have embraced Christianity. Let's drop down to the highlighted paragraph. It reads, mountain Jews of the Caucasus. Has died Ben Isaac in his letters to the king of the Khazars in about 960 AD says that according to a tradition, the Khazars 
formerly lived in the mountains of Seir. Seir in the Eastern Caucasus. In other words, they lived in Mount Seir in the Caucasus Mountains. You can also find this in the Jewish Encyclopedia and Descriptive Record of the History of the Religion, which says the same thing where it repeats the statement that the Khazars formerly lived in the mountains of Seir. That's Mount Seir. Seir in the Eastern Caucasus. Miller is of the opinion that the Jews of the Caucasus introduced Judaism into the kingdom of the Khazars. And the next reference reads and reads, Mountain Jews are those of the Caucasian Jews who live in villages in some towns of the provinces Dagestan, Turks, Kuban, and in the governments of Baku and Yasivlipol, and who speak an Iranian tongue, a dialect of the Tat. Skipping to the next paragraph, it reads, Hasdai bin Isaac, in his letters to the king of the Khazars in about 960 AD, says that according to a tradition, the Khazars formerly lived in the mountains of Seir, Seir in the Eastern Caucasus. Miller is of the opinion that the Jews of the Caucasus introduced Judaism into the kingdom of the Khazars and that the Jews of Dagestan originated in Azerbaijan. And the next reference reads and reads, the territory of Seir began at a distance of three days journey north of Durbet. It was AD 960 inhabited by Christians who yet lived on the best terms with Muslims. As you can see fam, just to give you an idea of where Mount Seir was in the Caucasus Mountains, it was a three day journey north of Durbet. So let's take a look to see where Durbet is in the Caucasus. And for that, let's take a look at the Encyclopedia Britannica and look up the word Durban. It says Durban, city, southeastern Dagestan Republic, southwestern Russia. The city lies in the gap between the Caspian Sea and the Caucasus Mountains at their closest approach. And here's a map, fam, where you can see the city of Durban, close to the Caspian Sea, close to the foothills of the Caucasus Mountains, a.k.a. the third Mount Sea. And remember fam, Seir means hairy and shaggy and was the home of Esau, who was hairy all over. And it was also home of the Horites who were cave dwellers. Now fam, did you know that the Caucasians who live in this region are the hairiest people on the planet? The New York Times. Still, there are genetically influenced variations in people. Whites tend to be hairier than blacks. And among whites, Mediterranean and Semitic people tend to be hairier than Scandinavians and Anglo-Saxons. And the next reference reads and reads, Dermatology Times. Caucasians have the highest hair density among the ethnicities studied. Black people have the lowest. Asian people have hair density that falls somewhere in between. All right, family. Well, that concludes episode one of the Caucasus. And in this episode, we learn that Esau mixed with the Horites, which means cave dweller. And that these Horites consisted of two groups, the East Horites and the West Horites. And we learn that Esau initially mixed with the East Horites in Mount Seir. We also learn that the West Horites, also called Hurrians, spoke a Caucasian language, meaning that the language of the Horites can be found in the Caucasus Mountains. And we also learn that Mount Seir, which is associated with Esau and the Horites, was not only found in the land of Edom, it was also found in the Caucasus Mountains, in the land of the Khazars. And so fam, in our next episode, Yah willing, 
we will reveal exactly who the historians say were the people of the Caucasus Mountains. And with that, Israel, stay tuned, like, subscribe, and stay blessed, and shalom.